previously on Follow the Leader. Today we're playing Anomaly Containment Breach by Carter Richmond. For those of you who are new to this game, here are the basics. Containment Breach is a tabletop role-playing game about a supernatural anomaly escaping from a facility where it has been contained by a sinister organization. Though the story of each game of Containment Breach will be different, there are a few things that will remain constant. There will be a sinister organization, their facility, and the anomaly that has escaped. There's a part of me that wants to go, like, take the fantasy, like, like bridge the gap between the fantasy and the sci-fi that we started off with and head in a, like, a urban fantasy sort of Magnus Archives direction in terms of setting. Um, and as for the facility that our anomaly is breaching, are we thinking, like, secret underground bunker... Museum of Mystical Artifacts, Corporate Research Facility, a compound built to hide a dimensional rift is always fun. I love shit like that. <laughs> I love a dimensional rift. Now, the anomaly. Why don't you tell us a little bit about our anomaly, Mac? Yeah. Our anomaly is Vi Dumarsh. I don't want to call Vi a creature. I don't want to call Vi a person. If I'm looking at this list in the game, the funniest thing that I could call Vi would be an ancient curse. But I don't think that's necessarily quite right either. Once upon a time, Vi was dead. Then Vi became not dead. And then Vi became unstuck? Question mark? It's kind of unclear what happened. Vi lost the the concept of being in the attempt at killing a god. And there are just shards of Vi kind of just scattered. And the anomaly is one of them. I think what we see is a bunch of warning lights on the consoles of the instruments monitoring Vi's containment room all light up at once and then immediately go out. The equipment that is providing an indirect visual on Vi's containment unit all cuts off. The only way to see what's happening is through the panes and panes of glass that separate the room from the monitoring station. And in that room, Vi has been kind of a sketch of a person. This is something that we've always seen as we've looked at Vi from an outsider's perspective. Our eyes have always kind of slid off of Vi's true form, but now we can't help but be drawn to it as we look on Vi's features, we can't name what they look like, but we know that they're there, and we know that the configuration that they're in is terrifying. And in that moment where we can't do anything but stare, Vi laughs, and the laugh resonates throughout the entire facility, almost shaking the very foundation of it, sort of in a echo of how Vi could make the sound of explosions in a cell far, far away from here. But this is more material. And as the laughter subsides, our gaze is allowed to wander elsewhere, and the equipment turns back online and it's almost as if nothing has happened everything seems normal everything looks the way that it looked before but in the distance we can hear a soft chuckle somewhere that's not where vi <laughs> is currently standing we now return to your game already in progress
All right. So we're also going to take down the Vi planning to retaliate. And I want to start a project. And that project, we don't know about the containment wards being in danger, but... That what that's what makes containment projects fun. Yeah. Um let's research the unknown artifact that Solomon brought back. Mhm. Mm because someone wanted something and that artifact is what Solomon was able to find. So it has to be important. Yeah. Like we said, no such thing as coincidences. Exactly. So I'm going to put that at four four turns. I feel like that seems pretty reasonable. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to do that as two turns. Give us something something fun that, you know, a surprise tool that Vi might use later. It's a surprise tool that Vi might use later. Yep. We've already done an episode title that, so. Yeah, well. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. We've got other ideas as well for episode titles, so. Yep. All right. My turn is complete. No, I'm not constantly trying to say quippy things in hopes that they will end up being episode titles. What are you <laughs> talking about? I say as I draw a card and flip it over. Five of cups. Have we all had five of cups yet? No. Five of Cups. A project fails and the organization demands answers. Who takes the blame and what really happened? Or, the organization pulls critical support. What does the team no longer have the resources to do? Damn it. If this had happened literally last turn, we could have prevented Vi from manifesting. But it's okay. That's such, it's such a good moment. Let's... I know that you just made it, but it's a two-turn project. Let's fail the Unknown Artifact project. Sounds good. I don't think Solomon gets blamed for that one because there's literally no reason to blame them because why would a filing assistant have been on that project? Mm -hmm. But it does fail. And higher-ups... <sighs> higher-ups, I think, pin it on R&D and R&D pins it on containment and containment pins it on uh, fucking archives for some reason which is really weird and archives is like well if we're gonna keep going on this train then i might as well blame human resources like what the fuck y'all so it's not super clear why it is that the project fails like or like how it is or like who is really responsible to the facility it was obviously vi flexing muscles that Vi hasn't been able to flex since before the Dark Sentencer. Well, whatever the Dark Sentencer equates to in this universe, anyway. So that's what happened. Um, so that project fails, so we have tick back on, Vi retali on Vi's retaliation. Yep. And then I got cups, which is acquire or lose something. I think it's funny if we just lose the unknown artifact. It's just gone now. Vi is like, nope, you missed your chance. <laughs> yep. Nice try. You, you, you fucked it up. If you'd started researching it before you made me manifest, then maybe, but nope. Yep. Not today, assholes. Alright. Sounds good. Um, I have gotten... The Page of Swords, because I am incapable of getting anything other than swords. We've both been drawing swords this whole game, to be fair. Yeah. So, Page of Swords. Uh, someone new joins the facility's staff. What trouble do they get themselves into due to inexperience? Or, someone new joins the facility staff. How does the anomaly exploit this? August? Mmm. Mmm. August, you know what I'm gonna say! So, I'm gonna go with someone new joins the staff, how does the anomaly exploit this? Which I hope is what you were thinking as well. Oh yes, absolutely, but I'm waiting to see who you say it is. So, I think that it's time 
that we introduce another familiar face and this familiar face is scarred and has an eye patch and I think Blade was brought in as a replacement member of the containment team and Blade's name is Galador Enderwall and as soon as Blade sees Vi, Blade gives Vi a little nod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Vi now has a person on the inside. Hell yeah. Thank you for picking up what I was putting down. <laughs> I was like, August. August. August, you gotta. Yep. So we now take down Vi planning to retaliate. Uh, so there's one turn left on that. And let's see. I know I've gotten a billion swords, but I still don't remember what swords does off the top of my head. Secure or endanger something? I am going to endanger the uh, containment protocols around Vi. Hmm. Nice. I don't know why those are in danger. I mean, we just got a new person on the team to to replace the one who died. Like, we're we're back at full strength. But you know, yeah, clearly nothing is going to go wrong at all. Wink, wink. Yep. Uh, so that's my turn. Wait, no, yeah, that's my turn. Um, so yeah, Mac, you're up. So let's do I wanna do I wanna do a little scene first. Okay. Before I before I do my, my turn. I wanna do I wanna have a scene of Galador and Vi talking. Sounds good to me. Cause I know what I, what the fuck I'm about. Yep. So I don't want Galador to get a nudge towards Vi, that's the thing. Yeah. So I think this scene has to occur during a shift change. There are, you know, people shuffling in and out. They're not necessarily paying attention to what Galador is doing. Blade is in the uh, observation station overlooking Vi's containment. And Blade makes Blade's way over to the intercom that is the way that the R&D team and the containment team try to communicate with Vi. Right. And Galador uh, presses the button and leans close to the microphone and says, Queen, I owe the rook. Vi kind of like... Vi is like sitting without like having anything to sit on and like kind of like looks like askance up at Galador. And Vi is mouth doesn't move, but Galador still hears in Blade's head. How is he? Galador takes a moment and says, I have not seen her in a while. I assume she is well. Do you have a plan, or are you planning on just bludgeoning your way through this one as well? I have a plan. Vi's hand kind of like flexes. Vi is clearer than Galador has ever seen Vi. Like there is an actual there there is a person there. That is that is a person. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be weird. I don't even think Galador is particularly scared. Not in the same way that containment and R&D was. I think Galador expects this. Like, Blade is uneasy. Vi's always made Blade uneasy. But Galador expects it. And that's what sets Blade apart from the rest of R&D and the rest of containment. Yeah. Galador's already dealt with Vi before, so it's not like... I think probably, like, half of the unease is probably seeing Vi actually entrapped. Because, like, in the sentencer, Vi wasn't actually imprisoned. Vi could have gotten out at any time. Mm -hmm. there, there is something holding Vi here. 
and that is weird as fuck. Yeah. And I think Galador, like, glances around and leans close to the microphone and whispers, I do not have much time. Little, little hand flick. Like, that's fine. I'm... And Vi doesn't say anything, like, kind of, like, grits Vi's teeth and is kind of like, do what you must. I am afraid I will not be much help, but I will try. I have plans of my own. Blade nods, looks around again. The, the new shift leads are settling in. And without saying anything else, Blade takes a step back from the intercom and goes to change Blade's shift as well. Mm -hmm. Vi is never going to stoop so low as to say something along the lines of, I'm glad you're here. But there was like that phantom feeling in Vi's chest for like a brief moment where Vi was like, oh, I'm not alone mm -hmm. there is someone here that i recognize that's i don't know how to deal with this what is this emotion that i'm feeling in my chest vi vi hasn't felt emotions in a long long time mm -hmm. vi doesn't really know what to do with emotions when vi does feel them so that was a those are, they would have been empty words, but they weren't empty words. Vi just thought they were. Vi, but Vi doesn't do anything because it's expected of Vi. So, like, Vi would have been like, oh, those are empty words. No, they're not. But Vi's emotionally repressed. So, mm -hmm. bless Vi. Being not dead will do that to you. Being not dead will do that to you. Having an emotional connection to another living person, Cordelia, cough, cough, uh, will do that to you. Vi voice, Cordelia Waitsmith has turned me soft. I need to kill some people now. Six of Cups. How does the facility staff get supplies? How does this make them vulnerable to the anomaly? Or how does one leave the facility? What's been keeping the anomaly from just using the primary exit? Um, and I would like this to be, I, I would like the answer to this question to be something that Galador no notes as Blade is gathering information mm -hmm. on this, on this one Blade heist. Yes, I'm, I'm, instead of calling Galador by a, another gendered word to refer to a person, I called Blade a blade. <laughs> wait, no, wait. Wait, if Galador uses blade self-pronouns, then the word that we should be using is sword, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of man or woman, blade is a sword. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, we're we're never going to be able to get into it on air about like the way that Galador views blade's purpose as a weapon, as being instrumental to Blade's gender and why Blade uses Blade self pronouns, but trust that you are on the right track. Oh, I love Blade. <laughs> we have to have this conversation now, August. We'll we'll do it when we're done. We'll do it when we're done. Um, so this is something that Galador notes in in the process of gathering information, which is that there is a door to the facility. It is a normal door. As far as Blade can tell, people, there are, I think there are some teams that bunk on site, and there are some teams that go home. The archivists go home at the end of the day, because they're not dealing directly with the anachronisms. But containment has the tendency to stay in the dorms. Galador, I think, can leave, and Galador does leave and comes back at one point just to be like, can I leave? And is like... Yes, I can. I, you know, I, I am going to go around the corner and I'm going to grab a sandwich from the corner shop. Mm -hmm. But the thing that is preventing the anomaly, a.k.a. Vibe du Marche, from leaving the facility is this temporal net that Vi is caught in. And you can't see it. But the, w the way I think that it's been done is that the containment has managed to catch Vi at one of those points in time, probably the most current point. That's an idea, actually. 
Um, I'm going to write that one down for myself. Um, so they've caught Vi at Vi's most current point. And you, what you were saying before about the temporal lock. And that's one of that was one of the tools that Containment was able to use in order to force Vi to manifest. Is that because Vi is temporally locked, it's easier to, to force Vi off of the anomalous plane and into the physical and vi tries to melt in the same way that vi had when vi was sticking to cordelia's back in the dark sentencer or becoming cordelia's shadow and there's galador like sees a ripple effect across the field and vi was just testing boundaries like vi wasn't tr actively trying to give galador any more information that's just a bonus mm-hmm so, Vi planning to retaliate after manifestation. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw your response to force above. <laughs> <laughs> force Vi to manifest in, for the listener in our doc at the project for our, our list of projects under next to force, force Vi to manifest just says, oops, and Vi planning to retaliate after manifestation just says, welp. So there is a hole in the net that Vi manages to kind of like pick away at, like little by little. Now that Vi is like, okay, I have hands, I have fingers, I am a person. Because there was a very distinct possibility that Vi was going to manifest as an actual, like, an animal or something. Or even something that, you know, this organization has literally never seen before. Being a person is okay, though. Vi is comfortable enough as a person. And, like, picks away at this hole in the net. And it's not wide enough to escape from. And Vi knows that the noose, so to speak, is going to be tightened. But in the meantime, there is a member of containment who has been particularly pushy and annoying like the kind of person who uses the intercom and just like talks and asks a lot of questions and tries okay yeah so this is good actually because vi makes a hole wide enough that when that person turns on the intercom to try and speak there is this sharp burst of feedback that knocks out communications across like that entire section of the building and like flickers the lights and ow like high pitched enough that like not high enough that like humans can't hear it but high enough that it hurts like they can hear it still and it that frequency hurts that frequency hurts a human ear and that's vice that's vice retaliation and it does not happen while galador is on shift mhm mm which is just purely beautiful timing. Vi would have done it still if Galador was on shift, but yeah, because Vi is not Vi is not a nice person at all. But Vi is like not so nice as to like save retaliation for when and a begrudging ally is not in is not present in the room. Mm -hmm. And then cups is. If it looks like I'm avoiding having a team meeting, you would be correct. Because I'm really bad at those, literally always. Um, <laughs> cups is to acquire or lose something. I could also start a project. Yeah, we don't have any more projects on the board. Yeah, we're out of projects, so I should start a project. Um, I am going to start a project to introduce security to our file system so that Vi cannot redact our files on Vi. And that is going to be, I think that was intended to be a two-week project and it escalates to five weeks. Because it's like, oh, this is going to be an easy fix. And it's like, nope, Vi is interfering. How? We don't know. Fair. How? Uh. Like, yeah, we're great at this. This organization, well, this organization is probably great at being an organization. They're just not great at dealing with Vi. Yeah. Agreed. 
Okay, I'm gonna flip this card. We've only had one major arcana so far, and that is so wild to me. Yeah, we're we're due for one, but for right now, Ace of Cups. What basic supplies does the team lack? Or what useless supply does the team have an overabundance of? Hmm. I feel like we've established that this team is not lacking in supplies, so I like the idea of a useless supply. Mm hmm Um, I am open to ideas if you have any. My knee-jerk reaction is paper, but I'm trying to figure out how to make that interesting. Yeah, I am not sure myself. Well, I mean, we can we can just have a we can just have a mundane breather. Like it's fine. Okay. We just have all this fucking paper because we we went all digital, which yeah. is stupid, but we did. Yeah. Here we go. I used to work at a at a newspaper in the mail room and that was right next to the printing press. And one of the things that they don't tell you about paper is that when you store large amounts of it, especially in ways that don't contain the dust, it's highly, highly flammable. Like, paper oh, yeah. dust is really flammable, so if it's stored in unsafe conditions, it could be a problem. Even if it's stored in safe conditions, but someone, you know, kind of fucks with the room a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, just as a, as a thought. So, we're going to count down on the project that we just started and cups i don't want to acquire or lose something so then don't yeah the so... author is sleeping we can do whatever we want here <laughs> um i think i'll start another project okay and i think this is going to be a six step project and it is going to be Galador explicitly finding ways to dismantle the things that would prevent Vi from leaving. Mm -hmm. This is probably not going to necessarily end in Vi's escape, but it's at least a start. Yes. I think there's still more. I think there's still more that we can do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely but this is the start. It's going to take a while, but this is the start. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. You're up. Okay. Um, I had an idea, and it disappeared from my head, and I'm thinking, great. So I'm going to open up my notes again so that I can write it down if it does pop back into my head. And I'm going to draw a card. A more minor arcana. Nine of Wands. Oh boy. Nine of Wands. The anomaly begins converting some members of the staff to work towards its interests. What does this recruitment consist of? Or, the facility staff begin to quarantine sections of the facility to keep the anomaly's threat from spreading. Who is left behind by this policy? Um, I think it's both. I think it's fun if it's both. I think we're going to start a unionization plot. Hmm? I think the filing system as part of our as part of our hardening security project uh the 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 filing systems are are being quarantined away from the anomaly which is making Solomon Ash and the other you know filing assistants jobs like much more difficult and I think Solomon Ash just like goes to buy his intercom at some point while like no one's paying attention and it's like Hey, can you fucking stop, actually? And Vi is just, like, in the first thing that Vi has said to literally anyone, and part of it is Vi is just so surprised to have been spoken to just so brazenly like that by someone who isn't Cordelia Waite-Smith, that Vi is like, tell them to leave me the fuck alone, and I will. It's all retaliation. All this is is retaliation. Like... Mm -hmm. If they leave me alone, I will stop. <laughs> if they let me go, I will stop. Like, I don't want or need to be here. I have other things that I need to do. Like, 
This is all I want. Let me go and I'll stop fucking with your shit. Um, and I think, I mean, I think that there's just like, and then like Solomon like actually looks in and is like, oh my God, that is not something I want to see ever again. That is going to be in my nightmares for a month. And then it's like, but that's like also a person. Like, straight mm-hmm. up and down, we are just keeping, like, a person in here. And it's, like, it's never, there's never been just a person before. Well, there's never been a humanoid before. Or at least a humanoid with the humanish features. And Solomon is like, this is weird, I don't like this at all. And just like, huh, I have to think about this for a second. And they will do that at some point, eventually. Maybe not now, but they will. Mm-hmm. Solomon, Ash, Redemption, Arc, Plotline. <laughs> Okay, uh, advance, advance projects. Yep. And wands, add a fact about something. Um, yeah, I'm gonna set up another, I'm gonna set up another Chekhov's plot device. Um, and I'm gonna tell you straight up and down right now, it is a Chekhov's plot device. It's, 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 so this, this temporal lock, um, this temporal lock that they have on Vi is set to the shard of Vi that is the most most current to our relative position in the timeline. Based on our findings from the quantum signature, we have about 50 to 60 years before that current positioning shifts. But there's a margin of error there, because obviously there is, you know... There's data points that we were not able to pin down time for because they come from a different they we we were not able to get readings. So there is there is some margin for error there, but we're pretty sure we're pretty sure that that's only about 5 or 6 years. So it would be 5 years fewer than we think or 5 years more than we think from like 50. Let, let's 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 say a solid number. We're say we're thinking the next the next most current version of Vi of of our anomaly is 50 years in the future plus or minus about five or six is what we think our margin of error is Mm -hmm. sounds like fun oh yeah i'm sure it'll be very fun for Vi (laughs) all right i am going to flip a card oh fun death oh great we were about due for a major arcana. We were very due for a major arcana. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The anomaly kills a member of the team suddenly and quietly. Who finds the body? What do they do? Yeah, now we're definitely at the point now where Vi is beginning to kill offensively. Mm hmm. Galador, just be grateful that you didn't hear Vi scared. I want to say Galador finds the body. Oof. Because I think I think that's the most interesting to me. Excellent. And where did Vi kill this poor person? Filing. This was a this was a nowhere is safe from me message. Do you mind if I get into a little bit of body horror? Absolutely not. Go for it. In that case, Galador is in filing and filing is a little bit deeper into the facility but it's you know far enough away from Vi's containment that you know there aren't any extra precautions taken or anything like that and I think Galador is running an errand Blade is the newest member of the containment team and even though Blade is obviously not a youngster uh, seniority still kicks in and so Blade has to run something to filing and when Blade gets there it's fairly quiet and Blade goes to a particular cubicle to find the person that Blade is uh, delivering an item for and that person is there slumped over fused to the console with their hands merged into the keyboard, their head slumped forward, resting against the monitor ostensibly, but on closer inspection, part of the head has been fused into 
the display and what bits of the face are still visible or twisted up in a scream. And the strangest thing of all is that the monitor is still on and still on a file and we see Vi's redactions happening in real time. Mm. And Blade turns off the console and walks away. Hmm. Oh, Blade. Oh, Galador. Just, yeah. You know, in the way that people say he. Yeah. Me, <laughs> Blade. <laughs> Noun, pronoun- noun pronouns are so good. Yes. All right, time to tick down our projects. And let's see. For the major arcana, we can do an anomalous action, which honestly, I'm down with an anomalous action. If it's okay with you, I think Vi returns to making sounds in random places. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one's, no one's, no one's closed that loophole. Yeah. Oh, you know what's fun? I'm gonna take loophole literally. Vi only makes one sound and it just keeps reverberating mm-hmm. and looping around the facility. Uh, may I suggest, uh, like, an alarm sound? <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. It just is constantly like, oh my god, an alarm is going off and it's like... And it's like, wait a second, isn't that the Apple alarm tone? Mm hmm. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, is that just your, t- that was just your turn, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll pull a card. Okay, row three. Four of swords. Oh boy. Oh, wow. Okay, this is fun. Uh, who in the facility are longtime friends? What is their relationship like? Or who in the facility are bitter rivals? What is their relationship like? This is always fun. Yeah. Um, I want to go with friends. Okay. And I want to say that, like, there's, so there's, there's multiple containment teams in the organization. And some of them are just, like, means to an end. And I think Ga- this is something that Galador learns as Blade, like, continues to work in the organization and continues to try and, like, pull apart parts of the net, is that the people in this containment team, and I'm gonna make every- I'm gonna make these people very sympathetic. They're workers, you know? Like, they're not- the, con- the containment team is not necessarily at fault for the behaviors of higher up. We know this. Unionization arc. The people on Galador's containment team are, like, legitimately, like, if you split us up, I take my, I take my opt-out clause. hmm Like, these, these are people, and they're, they're not going, they, like, like, it's, the threat has never reached that far, it's never reached that far in terms of the threat. It's like, they've requested to work with each other so much that the high, and the, they get such good results that the higher-ups are like, well, we'll just keep them together. We're gonna, we're gonna do... You know, we're going to do better if we just leave them together as opposed to splitting them up. And they're, like, legitimately friends. Mm -hmm. The sort of, like, weird ride and die that you get when you're, like, out in the field with the same people all the time looking after each other. Like, so it's, like, these two older people who are probably... How old did you say Galador was? Galador is in Blade's, like, 40s, I would say. Okay. Yeah, so the, these these two older people are probably in their 50s. They're probably getting, like, up, up like, early 50s. So they're, mm-hmm. like, relatively close to Galador in age, but, like, in their 50s. Like, they're, like, platonic co-parents. That's the vibe that you get. And the team is, like, maybe five people. Uh, like, less the person who died. And... So they've been working together for, you know, 20 to 30 years now. And then there's, like, one person who's in their 30s who has been working with them for, who was, like, a transfer from another department who's been working with them for a while and kind of was like, yeah, I'm kind of, like, in this. And then there's, like, the recently promoted intern who 
the grizzled vets have taken under their wing and like treat like their kid like like their like their their child but not like a child just their child and it's like very like tightly knit familial like joking around and like trying to do as good as you can do when you work for a shady organization that's dealing in temporal dimensional rifts but you know whatever you know they're not they're not act- they're not trying to actively do harm mm-hmm. but you know shit happens um so yeah so so and i think there's other teams that are you know they've been working together for a while so they're you know friendly with each other like the way that you are with your coworkers but this is like this is on a whole nother level this is like it's a not galador and sabriel levels of close but galador can see connections there yeah like like galador can like like blade like looks at this team of people and it's like huh i am suddenly evaluating some things about me that I'm not like I don't think are bad things necessarily, but like, hmm, I am I am thinking some thoughts. Um, I'm gonna look at our projects. I have ticked them down. Okay, great. So, I guess we should have a team meeting because we've now found this person who is some someone. Uh, Someone found the person in filing who has been fused into the computer. Yep. Um, I think I think cams were scrambled still from whatever happened from the anomaly, the anomalous shit happening, that no one would see that Galador was in there. Mm-hmm. Which again, Vi is not trying to do that, but timing works out the way that it does. So no suspicion is going to fall on Blade, but there is going to be a, like, okay, that's another person who's dead, you know. We, like, we quarantined that area, and someone still died there. And this is not higher-ups, this is just us. Mm-hmm. Where is safe? What do we do? I think it's pretty clear that the only place that's safe is not here. And even then... Uh, perhaps we should start sending teams back into the field just to minimize the contact in the facility that we're having with the anomaly. I don't think you're wrong there, but it feels a little bit like the coward's way out. Um, one of those, one of one of the people from that containment team is like, there's, there's no cowardice in wanting to stay alive to continue to do work to to do this work that we are trying to do there's there's nothing cowardly about that that's our team meeting yep did we get multiple perspectives no that was just a tiny conversation it's fine it works out it's good yep okay next card queen of cups We've gotten, like, one pentacle, and that's it. We've gotten one pentacles. We're gonna have to just start introducing characters. I mean, I just introduced four of them who I'm currently trying to name, but, you know. All right. Queen of Cups is... Someone discovers false records of the anomaly's history. What is the lie? What was covered up? Or, something is found in storage that shouldn't be there. What is it? Why is this worrying? I feel like we've pretty well covered the false records. So, I'm going to go with uh, something found in storage. And I think poor, poor Solomon. Oh, Solomon. (laughs) Is sent to find something in storage. And... It's not even anything related to the worrying thing that they find. And they do find the thing that they've been sent for, but the other thing that they find, kind of sitting on a shelf, totally unassuming, but giving off bad vibes, that stupid fucking moon rock. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, that's really good. I like that a lot. <laughs> and obviously it's worrying because uh, that thing wasn't meant to be there. And boy, howdy, is it bad luck. Mm-hmm. It's not good. It's not good at all. I do not like this. Solomon <laughs> Nash, I do not like this. It's okay. They have plot armor, but They have yeah. plot armor. It's it's not good. So um hardening the file system against Fi's redactions finishes this turn. Excellent. I'm I'm naming characters, sorry. You're fine. Um I think what they do is they start taking some of the important records and we start taking some of that paper that we've got and we start printing them because we don't know if Vi's abilities extend out of the digital into the physical, but, like, it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we're using, because we've, we've been siphoning information out of the temporal lock mm -hmm. this whole time. We have to have been. We have to have been doing shit um, this whole time or else what's the fucking point? And so we're using that to kind of reinforce digital security as well. Sounds good. And then you've got an action to take. Yep. I think this project is on Solomon's head. And I think Solomon is going to try to find a way to dispose of this moon rock. Oh, bless them. And I think it's probably only like... I think it's only like a one turn a uh, one turn project. Mm -hmm. Cuz I have an idea. Actually no, it's a two turn project. Um uh, because I have an idea of how it can dovetail with uh the other project that we have going on, so excellent. And that is my turn. Oh my god. Wait, do we already have no, okay. I've been I've been waiting for us to get a double. And we haven't yet, wildly. We're going to go through every single swords. Yep. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh jeez. 7 of swords. A field op team needs to bring a new dangerous anomaly in to be contained. What problems will this cause will be with the ongoing situation? Or a field operations team's request to use the facility to contain the anomaly they are investigating is denied. What consequences will this have for the outside world? So, I would like to make a suggestion. In the game that I played with Sam, we talked about there being an entity that the government was looking to harness and or kill for power. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about this entity. I mean, because there's also that, and there's also whichever fucking god it was that we killed. The main reason I don't want to use the god of law is just I don't want to unkill what y'all lost so much to kill. Yeah, that's a fair point. That is a fair point. Uh, one of the things I was thinking was not necessarily that we would unkill the god whose name I didn't write down for some reason, so I guess that's fine then. Okay, we'll go with your idea. I was thinking an art- I- uh, 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 fuck. I wish that I remembered. I was- I could- we can always bring in an artifact of- of hers, though, if I can remember what the fuck we called her. Anyway, um, no, okay, let's go with the entity that the government was trying to- to kill. And I think that they can't, uh, they, they get denied the request to use the facility. Okay. Did you name that entity? No, we left it very shadowy. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to name it either. I just wanted to make sure before I started talking. So this is not, this is not our containment team, obviously, because Galador is still here. If they were out in the field right now. Um, Galador would be with them, or should be with them. This is another field op team. This is another field op team that, um, our containment team actually knows very well. And, um, so I have, I have named three of the five, well, I've named three of the four people that we do not know. So the two older people are named, uh, Annie West and Malkovsky. 
because I know how to pronounce Polish names and Doug Eiffel does not. Sorry, that was a that was a deep cut Wolf 359 reference. <laughs> so, Galador probably finds Annie and Malkovsky talking like about the team and the denial of their request and overhears Oh, poor Galador. <laughs> Some of these things sound very familiar to to Blade. I do not know them. I do not know the details of this entity. So, August, if you would like to take the reins on what Galador would recognize hearing about. Yes, give me just a moment to pull that yes, up. Yes, I am going to put more trauma onto the back of Galador and Raul during this game. Don't worry about it. It's fine. So, the thing that catches Galador's attention is mention of the word Akanta. Mm -hmm. Once Blade hears that... Blade goes to Annie, and all Blade says is, we have to keep this contained and away from the higher-ups, if we can. This what? Sorry, I want to make sure that I know what you're talking about before I respond, just to make sure that I am keeping the correct thing away from the higher-ups, you know? And Galador goes on to describe a being outside of our plane of existence, a being that is potentially spanning multiple different planes of existence. And Blade explains that it could be a source of great power or it could be a source of ruin. And if the higher-ups get the wrong idea and try to use it as a source of power, it will almost certainly result in death. Uh, uh, Malkovsky, without even looking, grabs, like, the collar of Annie's shirt, because Annie was about to just go, like, track down the other containment team to tell them to, to get the fuck out of Dodge. And Malkovsky is like, okay, we have to be smart about this. Okay, what do we, then what do we do? How do we keep this quiet? And it is very much a conceding the floor to someone who knows more than they do in in terms of this situation. Malkovsky probably uses she, they. And Annie is like, <sighs> okay, I want Annie to be deaf and for Malkovsky to be just like quick, just to just be like translating everything that Galador is saying, like, like Malkovsky is like translating for Blade. Um, everything that Blade is saying, Malkovsky is translating for Annie, and that's why Malkovsky just has to physically do stuff to prevent Annie from going anywhere and be like, top priority, you know, get our people back away from that and then keep this as qu as quietly as possible, obviously. So that's a whole thing. Yeehaw. But it's good. And, you know... There is a sense that, that the team just, like, implicitly trusts Galador, which is kind of cool. Maybe Galador can use that. I don't know. Mm hmm And I think that Field Ops team does... You know what it is? You know what solidifies that trust is that that Field Ops team does all make it back under whatever advice Galador may have to give. Mm hmm And they're fine. And that anomaly is just kept tightly under wraps. Awesome. Um, out of character, Namika was the name of the Namika. God. Yep. Yep. Okay. I was thinking it was an N, and I just couldn't fucking remember. All right. The projects have ticked down. Excellent. Did we finish one? Not yet. Next turn. Next turn. Okay. Um. God, if if Namika gets brought up in. I have to think about what Namika would be in this world, but I'm th I am doing some thinking because I very much want that to be a, a, a button to push on, on Vi. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, let's see. Swords. That's, we, that's still we acquire or lose something, right? I think so, yeah. Can I bring the unknown artifact back again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna just type unlost. That unknown artifact has just has has mysteriously made its way back, not because of I, 
this time. So sounds good. All right, I'm gonna flip my card. Uh, we got we've gotten our the four hundred ones already. Yeah, we there got we go. our first duplicate. There's a duplicate finally. For the listener, the tarot deck that we're using simultaneously, and there's another one. Simultaneously has 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 different cards for upright and reversed. So if you're playing a game that uses reversed cards, you can get them reversed without having to flip them. Which means that we're going to occasionally draw duplicates. So that's fun. We just drew two in a row. Yep. And now August has pulled the star. A previous victory in containing the anomaly is undone. Who is in danger as the result? Hmm. <laughs> so out of character we're at about the time that I was suggesting we end. Okay. So I want to author is sleeping this. Well, I also know what this is exactly because this is what I was setting up before with the temporal lock. Well, here's the thing. We've got the moon rock resolving this turn as well as Galador working to undo the containment protocols. Mm Mm-hmm. That both tick down, so I think we can probably roll all of that into our final scene. Yeah. But I will cede the floor to you. Yeah. So, the thing about the temporal lock is that I said it was designed to contain whatever the most current shard of Vi to the present was. And the projected next one was in 50 years. Turns out that margin of error was much wider than anyone expected, and it was actually about mm, five weeks. So one moment there is Vi, as the facility has come to recognize Vi as a person. And the next second, what is contained and no longer contained because the temporal lock does not apply to a nightmare made visible on the physical plane. And Vi kind of, like, there is this just, like, everyone who hears this, which is everyone because of the way the loophole worked, hears this just, like, you know when you, like, come out of like a contorted position for the first time and you just like relax completely and you just kind of (sighs) go that's the sound and it is just not pleasant at all to hear like everyone just kind of freezes when they hear it and bias kind of just like that's more like it and that's all Vi says I think it's at this point Galador bumps into Solomon, who has the moon rock and is desperately trying to figure out what to do because of all the horrible things that are happening and about to happen. And Galador grabs Solomon's hand, seeing the moon rock, and drags them to the area with the machinery that's powering the now defunct quantum lock and blade takes the moon rock and uses it to start bashing the machinery which between just the physical damage because between brute force and the bad luck yeah all (laughs) of the containment fields in here go down And in this moment, there is chaos. The dimensional rift is rippling and changing and free to act as it will. But in this moment also, Vi is completely freed and unbound. Yeah. And um, the nightmare form of Vi melts just like Vi did in the sentencer into Galador's shadow not that anyone sees where Vi goes because as far as they're aware 
Vi is just gone. But there is a... There is a chip on Galador's shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't there before. Um, that wasn't there before. Galador looks at Solomon and says, You should run. And Solomon is about to say, But what about the opt out clause? And then went, I think my contract is void in the wake of this anyway. And just, yeah, bolts. Um, Vi, like, like, kind of, like, taps on Galador's shoulder. Galador says, All right, queen, where do we move? Hmm. Out, I suppose. I know that that doesn't fit with the metaphor, but... No metaphor's perfect, and Galador starts <laughs> dashing towards the exit. Yeah. Is that scene? I think that's scene. Oof, we did it. We did it. Vi's good. Vi's out. Vi's out. Vi has gone from being Cordelia's shadow to being a voice in Nezemi's head to now being Galador's shadow. Oh boy. I think that, I do think that Vi, in the, 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 the thing that did end up happening is that Vi managed to collect more shards in the facility. Mm -hmm. And part of, and like part of that was like like one of the reasons why they were able to force Vi to manifest was because Vi was able was 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 trying to reach out to the broken bits of that had been broken in that encounter with with Namika, and so Vi is at about I said Vi was at about ten percent power at the start, and I think Vi is maybe hovering around fifty to sixty percent at this point but expended like a lot of energy in order to go full nightmare mm -hmm. and is kind of like all right i'm gonna go to sleep but i'll still be here don't worry about it um I, please please don't worry about it i don't know if i could handle you were you worrying about anything mm -hmm. to galador and galador is like i don't worry about you but sure yep <laughs> um and there's just like now Galador just has this little niggle at the back of Blade's mind. Yep. And we'll we'll figure out what that means later. Yeah. Uh in the meantime, shall we do outros? Yeah, let's do outros. Awesome. Well, I have been August. You can still find me on Twitter at Harpydora. You can find the games I've written at harpydora.itch.io. Uh, you can find the podcast at FTLcast on Twitter, FTLcast.com, and Patreon.com forward slash FTLcast. Uh, and playing with me today has been the always wonderful Mac. Hello. Um, <coughs> thankfully, that always wonderful managed to disguise the fact that as you started introducing me, I just yawned. Ugh. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Citadel of Sorts. I am probably going to... Um, I'm I'm going to be thinking about those four people that I made up in the last second uh, for a while, and also about Vi. Um, oh, Vi. I love Vi. Um, yeah, so you can find me. Yeah, I already said where you can find me on the internet. I'm very tired. I'm going to go eat some candy and take a nap. You're so valid. Alright. Uh, in that case, shall we clap? Let's clap.
Hi, it's August, and I just wanted to thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed us, please consider leaving a rating on your podcast platform of choice, telling your friends about us, or tweeting about us using the FTLcast hashtag. We are also part of a nonprofit podcasting guild called Standing Stones Productions. We do a variety of shows, including The Room Where It Happened and Dumb Kids Playing Hero, two actual play shows, and a Steven Universe discussion podcast called Gay Space Rocks. We also do live streams at twitch.tv slash standingstonesprod. You can keep up with everything that we do on Twitter at stones underscore standing. Unfortunately, Standing Stones was already taken. Your support means a lot. Thanks again!